these are a series of synthesis tutorials for the SuperCollider platform, uh, development platform, and uh, um, I'm calling them synthesis recipes. So I'm going to actually try to make a specific sound uh, using this and just sort of, uh, you know, SuperCollider can be fairly abstract and a lot of times it's used to do fairly experimental things. Um, I'm just going to try to sort of focus on recreating certain sounds. Oftentimes I have tutorials that I find online and I, you know, written for, say, commercial plugins. And I'll try to duplicate those in SuperCollider to see how it's done. Um, right now we're going to be looking at um, this tutorial. It's quite nice. Um, Mo Volens, well done. Uh, and it's uh, for a synth bass, and it, he writes it for this Thor um, Thor plugin synthesizer, uh, which I believe it's quite a nice one. Is it Reactor or? In any case, it's um, it's a nice synth, uh, and so we'll go ahead and just walk through it and see how close we can get. He provides some nice uh, sound clips and everything like that. So let's see how we can well, how close we can get by doing something directly in Super Collider. All right, so I've copied over um, the synth def here from our MIDI sign project, and I'll just call this um, uh, synth bass. Okay, and you know, essentially this has an oscillator here, sine wave oscillator, and it has an envelope here. Okay, and we can control like the pitch and the amplitude, and then we'll probably change a lot of these things as we go on. So <coughs> let's start with what, what he what he talks about. And let's see how close we can get. We have started with an initialized patch, consists of a single sawtooth, open low pass filter, and a basic envelope settings. Okay. So first of all, um, I believe most commercial things have. Um, well, first of all, we have to use a sawtooth wave. So let's do that. Let's change our sine wave to a saw. Um, okay. And there's a number of different saws we can use. So let's look this up, and actually we'll do a search, just just to be you know thorough and a bit curious, explorational. S A W. Let's see, we have a blit derived sawtooth sawtooth with a fourth order differential polynomial waveform, uh, L F saw, low frequency saw, band limited sawtooth, super efficient sawtooth os oscillator with low aliasing, sync saw, hard sync sawtooth wave, ver saw. Woo. Lots of things. This sounds pretty interesting, the saw DPW. Now, this might be part of, I wonder, all oh, right, it's an extension. I wonder if it's part of the SC3 pl plugins. Okay, yeah, so if you want to use this one, you're going to have to install this SC3 plugins. Um, make sure you get those. Uh, I won't explain that here. Uh, but it's worth doing. If, if you don't have those plugins or don't want to bother installing them, just use the plain saw. But let's let's have a look at this. Uh, make sure the arguments are similar to, I believe they probably are. And it just says, aliasing, it suppresses aliasing. It's three times more CPU efficient. Well, okay. Can't really uh, argue with that one. Okay, so we're going to have a frequency and an initial phase. That's just like the, the normal saw. Uh, so saw DBW. Let's go ahead and do that. And again, if you don't have this object and... Uh, you can't figure out how to install it, then just go ahead and use plain saw. Okay, so we have sawtooth wave now, um, and we have an open low pass filter and very basic envelope settings. So we're gonna have to add a low pass filter. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So uh, uh, low pass filter. Um, once again, let's explore. I know a couple options, but let's explore here. Let's search and see what comes up if I do low pass. Okay, there's a couple, there's a below pass, a below pass, filter comparisons. Okay, oh, Bahab. All right, um, yeah, these are awful nice. These Moog ones are really, really nice sounding. Um, so, you know, you have options, but let's just use the, the one that is generally used in SuperCollider or the sort of built-in one, and that's a resonant low pass filter. Okay, so we'll go ahead and create another variable um, let me just create a new line here so we don't get too uh, crowded there. And we'll create one called um, LPF. Okay. And our LPF here will be after the synth. 
we'll call this LPF equals um, sorry I'm hesitating because uh, really we just are going to eat the synth and put it in a low pass filter but that's fine um, why don't we we'll, we'll worry about the nomenclature a little bit later so we'll say LPF equals um, R resonant low pass filter dot AR okay and then our in it's going to be our synth, our sawtooth wave. Okay, uh, synth, sorry. We're going to probably change some of these variable names later. And the frequency, it says open, so we'll just put it at, uh, whatever, 21,000 for now. Okay, and we'll leave the arcuate resonant quotient at 1 for now. Uh, and so that's going to be passed in. The synth is going to be passed in. But then we have to pass this. So actually, you know what we'll do? I'm going to change my synth here. I'm going to change it to OS, OS1, okay? So I'm going to say OS1, 1, okay? And then I am going to actually um, make this, add this, and call it, um, I'm just going to call it SIG for SIG signal, all right? Uh, no, I'm oh, sorry, okay. Uh... Right, sorry, uh, I'm just trying to decide on nomenclature here. Okay, um, uh, uh, it's a low pass filter, but it contains a signal. So LPF1, well, that's fine. We'll just call it LPF1. Okay, and then we have to change this. This is going to be actually working on the OS1. Okay, and then we're going to stick the LPF1 in here because that's it's the filtered saw. That's actually going to be going out our sound card, right? Okay. So open filter. It doesn't say anything about resonance, does he? He says look at the resonance is at zero, really. So we're, let's change that to zero. Then we'll put resonance. You know what we'll do is we'll have a freak. We'll have a um, f freak filter freak, and we'll have and we'll call it filter freak one, and we'll have a um, uh, RQ one resonant quotient one, okay, as arguments. All right, and the same thing here, we could just make a new line of arguments, and we'll call FFRQ1, and we'll open that up, so we'll just say that equals to 20, whatever. It could be just 20,000. I don't know why I put 21,000. And then uh, uh, RQ1 <coughs> equals zero, okay? So uh, real quick explanation, I mean, Hopefully, you have some idea of how some of these things work, but a resonant low-pass filter really passes out um, the low frequencies. So if I set it to 20,000, that means it's going to let through all the audible uh, all the audible frequencies because you know our hearing goes up to about 20,000 hertz. If I set it, say, to 10,000, that means it'll only let through all frequencies up to about 10,000 hertz, and it'll filter out frequencies from... 10,000 and above, etc. So if I set it really low, like 100 hertz, only the 100 hertz free filter comes through. And you've heard these a million times in all the music and everything. It's that sort of muty, muffled kind of sound you get. Um, uh, and then the r r RQ, the resonant quotient, um, is a uh, uh, filter, uh, just sort of the, um, the width of the, the, the bandwidth of the filter, really. And how resonant it is. So um, I don't know if I'm explaining that right. Let's look at how they explain it in the thing. So RQ, the reciprocal. I'm sorry, the Q. So it's it's the um, bandwidth. Still, it's the Q or the bandwidth of the, the the cutoff. So a real high Q will cause it to be fairly more resonant, uh, and you can even send it into feedback. And a low Q will just um, uh, you know, uh, let let more and more things through. Okay, uh, I hope that's right. Anyways, yeah, I'm pretty sure high is more resonant. All right, well, we'll we'll deal with that right now later. Anyways, so its resonance anyways is at zero. Um, so hopefully that doesn't mean. Sorry, let's look again because it does. Does zero mean? Uh, it won't be nothing will be come out. Or 20, 
No, zero. Okay, that's good. Ooh, what, what, what? So, uh, did a... Uh, sorry, resident low pass filter here is being, um, it's res uh, passing a saw, and then it's RQ is epsilon os x line between 320. Ew, confusing. Uh, oh, right, okay, it's, oh, that's the that's the frequency, is it? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's the frequency. And the, it's 0.2 is the resonant quotient. And that's the saw frequency, 5.03. Okay, well, uh, I'm not sure I can use zero, but um, uh, let's give it a shot. And maybe we'll have to put it at uh, 0.01. We'll just put it really low, something like that. Okay, in any case, that's, that's essentially what we have here. We'll find out. And uh, then it also says that we're going to... Um, Uh, to um, basic envelope settings. Now, I have a feeling that most envelopes are ADSR, and in fact, ADSR. So let's go ahead and just update our envelope. Instead of ASR, we're going to have ADSR, okay? And we're going to have to have a, an extra argument here is decay time. So the dec decay allows you to have sort of an attack and then a, a, another another step to your envelope and then the final release. So let's put uh, DKY, okay, and sustain level. We're going to leave it. Um, I'm going to have SUS for sustain level and release time and then a curve. So we're going to have to put this on as a curve. Curve, okay. So we need to add DKY and sustain level. Okay, and we're, we're probably gonna have to change a lot of these, but that's fine. Let's just add these in. DKY equals uh, decay time. Uh, we'll just uh, set these to, to nothing for, because some, some, oftentimes you don't use the decay stage, and SUS equals one. Okay, all right. So that's just a adding a ADSR envelope to our thing. Um, I'm probably going a little too fast. Let me, let me slow down and back up a little bit. Uh, our previous envelopes dot ASR included um, dot plot just were straight up and down, huh? So you'd go up and then you'd come back down, okay? ADSR uh, gives you another stage. So you go up, and then you go down to a sustain level, and then you your final release. Okay, so you could have it suddenly go pow, and then release itself. All right, it gives you this another another level of it. And so what I had to do here was I had to uh, introduce some extra extra arguments, an attack, a decay, the amount of time you want it to decay, the level at which you want to sustain once it's secondary decay has happened and then the release as well okay and the curve we've always had that's going to change at the sort of curve level okay but everything else more or less remains the same so this is my dog growling all right okay so and then um right so then we still have our envelope here so i think we that was a lot of stuff to do to add, but basically we're adding these pieces. And just to give you an idea, even though we are making a synth base here, this sort of structure is a classic sort of subtractive synthesis type of structure. So once we get some of these pieces in place, since this is, this is the very first one, we're gonna probably be able to use this basic template for most of our other synth sounds, at least the ones that use the technique of subtractive synthesis. Uh, and we'll probably explore several of those, but maybe hopefully get to several other ones as well. All right, so um, so let's see what happens next. So uh, they they play their initialized patch there. Okay, I won't have as fancy little lick as that. Okay, but we can get the idea of the basic sound. So let's see 
how our thing sounds. Uh, let me boot my thing. Send the synth base. Ah, oh, good. No typos or mistakes. A equals synth. Um, and uh, oh, the name of course, synth base. Okay, and we're going to have a a dot set, and then this is a trig. We have it set to one, and then an a dot set trig zero. Okay, so that can trigger on and off. Okay, so let's send that to go. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, maybe we set the frequency much lower. So actually, we can just, yeah, that's fine. We'll just say freak uh, pitch. And let's say, let's go to 30. Let's see what that sounds like. Uh, let's see, what did I do to my pitch? Uh, I have too many pitches here. I have a pitch argument here and then a pitch variable as well. I thought you could do that. Uh, we'll call this beat variable pitch, the V pitch, uh, and that's free A. Okay, and let's resend our synth def and see if that makes the difference. Oopsie. V pitch, V pitch, pitch, pitch. What did I do? I think I just didn't highlight enough. Oh no. E what do I do here? Variable pitch, not too far. Ah, right, okay. So I hear V pitch here. I forgot to change it there as well. Okay, so just change that to V pitch as well. Okay, a synth def, there we go. Let's change that, let's see. Oh, it still doesn't like it. Uh, so what am I doing wrong? 60. Yeah. Okay. Of course, um, I messed up this little bit here. I don't only need the square brackets when you're actually uh, instantiating the synth. Uh, when you set, you just have you know uh, pairs, argument name, value pairs. All right, and this probably it didn't it didn't balk at that. So it could be that we can just use arguments and variables the same name though. That's probably not recommended. But let's let's just go ahead for simply because I think we're we're gonna get carried away with arguments here, so let's see if that works. Let's send that and let's see if that works. That's right. Uh, it sounds okay. It's hard to tell. I don't have his. I don't have the guy's fancy little lick there. So it sounds like. Oh, uh, 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 what is that one? Four. Is that kind of close? Well, you know, we don't have to get exact. Oh, it's quite a bit higher than. Yeah, well, anyways, pretty close. I think that's getting there. So we'll just keep that, keep that like that. Let me save this. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll give that a shot. Hopefully that, that, that works. So let's continue on so that's anyways just the, like the raw patch that's like when you open up the plugin but like i said we're building an architecture then we added a second saw wave and detuning them for some fatness okay and finished off with a sub oscillator Ooh. all right so uh let's go ahead and add a uh we're gonna have to add these two waveforms anyway so we'll go ahead and do that a second saw wave and a sine wave all right so we're gonna do two things we're going to use uh, we're going to add these oscillators, so we're going to have an oscillator OSC um, <coughs> 2 and OSC 3, okay? And so our OSC 2 is going to be, is going to be equal to another saw. And then let's go, and we're going to have to update all these. We're going to have a freak 1 and a pitch 1. Pitch one and pitch.
H1 up here. Okay. And then we're going to have a uh, pitch 2 and a freak 2 and a pitch 3 and a freak 3. Okay. And uh, we're going to create a pitch 2 equals, and then we're going to make a control rate. And let's just keep it at 60 for now. And oops, doesn't. And we'll have the same lag. Okay, and we'll have a, a freak. Oh, pitch three. Same thing. Okay, and then we'll have. Um, so freak one is equal to pitch one MIDI CPS, and we'll have all these. Now you know, of course, we could we could um, we can consolidate that stuff, and maybe this is a good opportunity to do that. All right. So maybe instead of um, instead of all this, uh, we can just we can just sort of consolidate because it's getting a little bit messy. Okay. I did some of this stuff for just clarity, so we can see how all the steps work. But let's consolidate all this freak stuff. So. Why don't we get rid of all these pitch one, pitch two, pitch three. And we'll just have freak one, freak two, freak one, freak two, freak three. And we'll have that. And then we'll just do the MIDI CPS right here. It's equal to pitch one dot MIDI CPS. Okay. And we'll just copy those over there. So we'll convert it here right on the same line. And then we'll just assign it to the frequency. So it's the frequency in hertz. All right. So freak one, freak two, freak three. Okay. And then we, we don't need these anymore. So this is going to be freak one. This is going to be freak two. That's the secondary saw wave. And then os three is going to be a sine. And it's going to be freak three. All right, um, and then f then we need to mix that. Now I'm not sure are we mixing before? Um, <coughs> are we mixing before the low pass filter or after the low pass filter? So let's have a little peek ahead. Uh, Is it like a, a bus sort of low pass filter or do we low pass each of the saws? Okay, it looks like it's just a it's it's an it's a post low pass filter. Okay, so we're gonna consolidate, we're gonna mix all these together, and then we're gonna make them a signal and then we're gonna pass a signal through a filter. Okay, and again to sort of simplify uh, variables, well I'll I'll show you. So we're gonna use this uh let's see. Uh let's create another variable called sig okay and we'll just use that for we'll just repeat this variable sig all the way through so we can actually get rid of this low pass one okay because it looks like we just have the one low pass filter so we're going to get rid of this low pass one we're just going to eat the signal variable and just keep replacing it so sig and we're going to use this um this uh ugen called mix m-i-x dot a-r now you can just add them. You can just use OS one plus OS two plus three. I think that's fine. Sometimes I like to do this because it's a little bit more explicit. Uh, it might be a little bit more efficient. I'm not sure. And then uh, uh, additionally to that, those brackets, you have to use an array to mix all the signals. So you have to use these square bracket uh, square bracket notation. So the first thing array. See, it calls for an array array of signals. Okay, so that's OS one, and then comma OS two. And then OS3. Okay, so it's going to mix. The sig now will be all the three oscillators mixed. Okay, and then um, um, we'll just eat this uh, variable sig. Okay, we'll just replace it. So sig is this the mix three oscillators, and then sig null now equals the mix three the three mixed oscillators um, uh, filtered. So we're going to put sig in here too. So signal at this stage of the code 
equals these three oscillators mixed. At this stage of the code, signal equals the three oscillators mixed pass through this low pass filter. Okay, and it doesn't look like we'll need this one, but we'll just leave them one for, for, for you know, just save us some trouble. Okay, uh, now uh, the next thing we do, we need uh, individual amplitudes. Well, I mean, ideally we have individual amplitudes for each of the three signals, but it could be that we don't need that right now. All right, so to maybe to save the, for keep the code a little bit cleaner and little little, uh, we won't put that in. Let's see how close we get. If we need to adjust the amplitudes of the various things of the various um, uh, oscillators, then we can put an a, like a amp, you know, os one amp and os two amp in here. All right, but we'll just have a, a global envelope amp right now. All right, so. Um, So we're going to have to guess a little bit here at what he does here. So he says we have a detuned second saw width. All right. So um, yeah, keyboard, keyboard, tune, right? I see he's using this tune knob. Uh, it's really hard to tell. Okay, I guess we'll probably have to just sort of, we'll just have a guess here. Three oscillators lower, the first two D2. So let's have this. Okay, it's just a kind of phasey thing. It's very little bit. Oh, that, that was with the sub already. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of guesswork here, okay? And actually, we won't, in fact, need, since we're, uh, how do I want to approach this? I guess I'm hesitating because I can make these individually controllable with these arguments, the frequencies, or if we want to just keep this strictly the synth base, uh, we can just hard code the difference within this. Huh? So why don't we just try hard coding it for now? And we won't have to worry about all these frequency pitch. So I made you do a lot of work if you're copying along. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, maybe we'll just hard code all these things and we'll just put them in uh, in relation to it. Okay. So if we have a freak, just a standard freak. And I, but I think the model for the future in other synth things, and may, maybe we'll you know eventually take this is that if we have each individually um, adjustable, then um, well, maybe we should. Maybe I changed my mind. If we all have these individually adjustable, then uh, you know it, it's it's a lot more flexible. And we can make a lot more different sounds. Um, however, when we execute, we're going to have to remember to use a bunch of arguments in here in the settings. All right. So uh, yeah. Oh, I'm w sorry. I'm being wishy-washy. Okay. Well, maybe for since this is our very first one, we'll just be a little bit simpler. So we're gonna have a single freak, and it's gonna come in to this single pitch that comes in. Okay. And we're not going to uh, deal with that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have this the first saw be at frequency one at the frequency, and this second saw be the frequency. Um. Sorry, so um, since frequency is this logarithmic thing, we actually have to add it to the pitch, okay? So um, I guess we do need freak two. So we'll have freak two. Um, <laughs> ah, okay. So... Uh, Right, sorry. So um, we're going to need another uh, variable. I try to keep things simple, but we are going to need another variable. We're going to need a pitch, a pitch variable. So we're going to call this pitch, okay, uh, just so we can use it. And then we're going to do freak one equals pitch, right, okay, and freak. 2 equals pitch. Uh, sorry, so we're going to have to actually do, do this later. Okay, so basically the idea, sorry, I'm not being very clear. 
the idea is that we're going to have this pitch come in, and this that's an argument that comes in. It's a control rate argument. It's coming in from outside, whatever we set you know, the pitch to be. All right. And then before we were just converting it right here, I tried to do a shortcut. But in fact, what we want to do is we want to add a little bit to this to detune it, right? And then we want to drop the sine oscillator a couple octaves or something like that. All right. And in order to detune it, because if you go up the range, if you're playing different pitches and stuff like that, the, the amount of hertz is going to going to vary. It's not always going to be a 3 hertz difference or a 4 or 10 hertz difference, right? But the pitch, the MIDI pitch will always be the same. So if you're doing like a quarter tone difference, it'll always be 0.25, right? Okay. So we have to, before we convert it, we have to add it. So frequency, so pitch uh, will be, pitch here will be the pitch. Frequency 1 will be this pitch just straight up converted to uh, hertz. Okay, and then the second one will be, uh, will, will be this pitch plus a little bit. So I don't know how to, let's just go 0 0.1. Let's see if that sounds anything like what we were hearing there. All right, and, um, uh, and then we'll convert the whole thing. So we'll have to put up some parentheses there to MIDI CPS. Okay, and then the frequency 3 is going to be equal to the pitch, okay, and then minus, how many octaves is he going down? So he says a whole octave below the others, okay, so just one octave, minus 12, so 12 semitones, 12 midi notes, and then dot, then convert it. Okay, so then that's freak one, freak two, freak three. Okay, uh, let's test that and see how that sounds for now. Uh, signal is mixed, signal, huh? oh, oh, this needs to be changed to signal. Okay, remember to do that. So that signal is coming into the, is being mixed. Signal is low pass filtered, and then the signal is coming out the thing. So we're just passing that signal all along. I think we're getting there. Okay, at least it compiles there. We go synth bass. Let's see how that sounds. Oh, it sounds very 80s, doesn't it? Uh, not sure. I think I think we overdid it on the detuned. Let's see how this sounds. Sounds a much slower uh, tuning, so maybe even less. Gosh, um, so plus 0 0.1, 0 0.05. We'll cut it in half and see what happens. Okay, let's let's turn that off. Let's do that. And yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Pretty happy. It sounds. A little bit more phasey than that one, but of course that one's a stereo version. So uh, let's try a, a little higher pitch. Uh, Forty? I don't know where he is. Forty-five. Sorry. I'm being tone deaf here. Uh, 35? Oh, pretty close. That's well, pretty close. I think it's pretty close. Uh... Might even be less, gosh. Slightly detuned, really a slight, isn't it? Two five, cut that in half. Let's try that again. Oh, that's a little bit too funky. So let's stick with the, well, we'll just make it slightly. Let's stick with a 0.5, maybe even a little higher, point, point 0.7 or something like that. 
I, you know, I wonder what it would sound like if I just did like point two. Let's uh, let's go way up and then we'll just experiment and we'll take it back. In in the end, I, it's not so much that I wanted to sound exactly like the guy, but uh, it's something that sounds interesting. Okay, yeah, that's a little, a little quick that phasing phase shift. So let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Maybe that point six. We'll keep it there. Oh, sorry, point zero six, huh? Okay, we'll keep it there for now. And then you could adjust that. that. But that gives you an idea, though. So this second um, sawtooth wave is being detuned slightly from the first one. It causes that sort of phasey, nice phasey kind of feel. And then this uh, frequency three is a sine os, is an uh, octave below the others. Okay? But you just change a pitch the once, you know, just like a keyboard giving the pitch. So you change the pitch once, it's going to change all these automatically. And I suppose really that is the way you kind of want to do that. Okay? Okay. All right. So, um, so that's pretty good there. I think what we'll do is we'll take a little break right there. That's about 30 minutes of, of tutorial, and uh, I'll take up the rest of it in part two. Okay, so good luck with that.